That was less than two years ago. And this is my account today. Growing followers was really hard at first, but I did a ton of experimenting and I did figure out some patterns that could bring me thousands of followers pretty consistently. I'm gonna share with you how I did it and I'm posting everything for free thanks to Adobe who is sponsoring the series. I made five episodes and I'm sharing them on my Instagram one a week. But if you're watching this, that means that you're watching on Adobe Discover, which means you can watch the whole thing for free right now. So. Let's go. If you're trying to grow, the most important thing to do is to stop thinking about Instagram as a photo app and start thinking about it as a video app. Instagram is in a battle with TikTok right now, which means video and specifically reels is a huge priority for them. And if you want to grow, you want to work with the algorithm, not against it. Reels was specifically designed to give your video a chance to go viral. This was my first viral reel. You can see from my follower growth the day that my reel went viral. And I know a lot of people who have grown thousands of followers from a single viral reel, but it's hard to make a viral reel. Most of my reels don't go viral and it can feel so powerless to be at the mercy of the reels algorithm all the time. I actually found something that worked even better for me. And with this technique, I grew over a hundred thousand followers in a single day. That's next week's episode. But if you don't want to wait, you can watch it right now. I've experimented with so many different ways to grow my account. And there was one thing that just worked better than everything else. It was this, get large pages to repost your content and even better if you can get them to repost your reels. Out of everything I tried, that was the single most effective thing and more than half of my million followers are from that. Here's how you do it. Find large community pages on Instagram, pages that have a theme. Maybe it's filmmaking, art, humor, education, or travel. You're looking for pages that post content from lots of different creators, and then you need to reach out to them. But here's the tough part. These pages get hundreds of DMs. So how do you stand out and get their attention? That's a whole strategy that took me, honestly, months to figure out. And I wrote out exactly how I did it here in my article for Adobe, which you can read for free right now. In next week's episode, I'm gonna talk about how you can go from just getting views to actually getting people to follow you. In part two, I showed you the main strategy I used to grow. I did this by getting large pages to repost my reels. Here's one of them. I got this video reposted on 9gag. And that day, I grew by 12,000 followers in a single day. Not bad. Two months later, another one of my videos got reposted on 9gag and it got around the same number of views. But this time I grew by 127,000 followers in one day. If the videos got roughly the same number of views, why was there such a big difference in the number of followers? Here's why. The second time I asked 9gag to tag me in the first line of the caption. Why does this matter so much? Because Reels only shows the first line of the caption. If you get tagged any lower than that, people just won't see it. So how do you get pages to tag you in the first line? You can just ask nicely and say this, but none of this matters if people don't actually want to watch what you're making. So next week's topic is storytelling. I'm going to tell you about one pretty simple change I made to my content and then my videos started taking off. Here's what I did. I started showing the behind the scenes of my shots. Why is showing the behind the scenes so powerful? It's because it changes the intent of the video. When I didn't do behind the scenes, I was just kind of showing off. Like, look at this cool shot I got. It was about me. But when I started showing the behind the scenes, it's no longer about me. It's about you, giving you a chance to be entertained or to learn something. But the point I'm trying to make is not just about the behind the scenes, it's about being useful. That's the number one change that I made was going from how can I show off on social media to how can I be useful to my audience? The creators that are growing the fastest right now are the ones who know how to be useful to their audience. And being useful can take many forms. Next week, I'm going to talk about creativity and how I get my ideas. There's this myth of the creative genius who gets ideas out of thin air. But I don't think of creativity as some sort of mysterious talent. Creativity is a muscle and it's a muscle you can train like any other. Growing up, I never even thought of myself as creative. I prided myself in being analytical, not creative, maybe because of my culture. And it wasn't even until much later in life that I even started trying to be creative and it was pretty uncomfortable and awkward at first. But the more I practiced, the stronger that muscle got. The number one way that I get my ideas is I see something that I like and then I just try to change one thing. And that's it. I rarely start from zero. 
I'm just constantly observing what's around me and trying to put an original spin on it. Next week, I'm gonna talk about something that's really important to me. Topic is losing followers. If you let social media give you validation, then you're also giving it the power to take away that validation. You don't get to experience the rush, the high of getting so many likes without experiencing the downside when it doesn't happen. At some point, you're gonna make something that flops. It doesn't get as many views or likes as you think it should, and that's enough to send anyone into a bit of a downward spiral. But many creators chase followers for a living. I'm one of them. And in order to stay sane, you've got to find something besides the views and the followers to hang on to, ideally something you can control. Here's what I measure myself on besides views and followers. One, did I learn something? And two, am I excited about what I'm making? And I'm in full control of both of those things. The kind of work that I wanna do more of is work that I am so excited about it that I'm willing to lose followers for it. Because if you are just posting out of your fear of losing followers, then you may just end up losing yourself.